previously on Port Charles. What is the point? The point is, Susie Cream Cheese is hiding something, and you know what it is. That's why you're interested. <laughs> Frank, there's something I want you to know. What in the world are you doing in my apartment? Are you sure this is a job for you? This is not what we planned. I mean, it's it's gone on far too long. They should be hearing from us uh, just about now. His daughter will be returned in exchange for $5 million. Oh, I wonder how Burgess would feel about that. About what? Checking out Miss July's anatomy while on call? <laughs> yeah, well, I hate to disappoint you, buddy. Whoa, that's hot. <laughs> I wouldn't want this to get out. It'd ruin your reputation. What reputation? Oh, forget about it. Go back to your magazine. And yeah, well, I guess it's just uncool to be into your work. But it's all I used to have. I am. Is it rough? What, standing around looking like a jerk while the rest of you are practicing medicine? Listen, I wasn't going to put it that yeah, way. Yeah, it's rough. It's, uh, it's like uh, training for eight years for a marathon and then, and then just being sidelined. Well, if it's any help, you can take out my appendix. Thanks, but I, I forgot my power tools at home. Look, I just I have to be clear at this hearing. I mean, it's driving me nuts. I know what you mean. I was just telling Danielle the other day that if, if I couldn't be a doctor anymore, well, I know I couldn't take that. She's very pretty. Thanks. Let me ask you a question. How do you find somebody that looks like that and puts up with an intern schedule, huh? Well, I didn't find her. She found me. Sweetheart, when I arranged for you and Jake to get together, didn't I promise you everything would be all right? Yes. Now, why, he is not the most difficult person to be around now, is he? No. The guy's not unattractive. He's very attractive and very nice and sweet. And I just, I feel rotten for using him like this. You're not getting involved, are you? No. Of course not. Sure. I just hate to see him get hurt. Well, I told you. No one will get hurt, and I've kept my word. Have you? Meaning? What about Scott Baldwin? I mean, he's hurting, wondering who's got his little girl. Well, Serena is in very good hands. And Scott Baldwin's pain means very little to me. He was hit by a car. <laughs> oh, you can hardly blame that on me. Can you? Of course not. Everything is going to be fine. Hmm? Come here. Just fine. It's a ransom note. Your daughter will be returned unharmed in exchange for five million dollars. God. Start getting the money together in unmarked bills, none larger than $500. You'll be hearing more on Friday, June 27th. June 27th? You'll be, you'll be told the details of the drop and the site of the delivery. No, no, no way. I, I'm not letting these bastards hang on to my Scott? daughter for over a week. No way Scott, in hell. I understand how you feel, but you don't have a choice. This person or these people, they're holding all the cards right now. Well, I'll get another deck of cards. Just listen to Kevin, please. He's right. All he's doing is telling me to sit around. He is telling you something that he knows about. He has done studies on criminal minds. Don't tell me I don't have a choice. Don't tell me that. And don't jump on him like that. Lucy, it's all right. Now, Scott, I understand if you don't trust me. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't trust anyone right now. Thank you for your understanding. May I see that ransom note? Mr. Baldwin, I would take Dr. Collins' advice. I'm going to take my own advice. I've investigated a lot of kidnappings, and with all due respect, given your present state of mind, you are the last person who should be making decisions on strategy. 
Now, five million's a lot of money. Will you be able to raise it? Well, they wouldn't have asked for it. They didn't think I could come up with it. Well, we've got a ransom note. And the clock is ticking on your little girl. That's good news. You hang in there. We'll get your little girl back. And in the meantime, I'll be out in the van. Thank you. Scott, come on, don't. Scott, please. Just for now, do whatever these people ask. It'll give them the sense of being in control and they'll be less likely to take their anger out on Serena. I'll handle it. Scott, 80% of these cases are resolved when the victim's are released unharmed if the kidnappers get what they ask for. Well, thank you for the statistics, but let me tell you something. My daughter is not going to be in that 20%. I know what you must be going through, but it will all be over soon, and we will have what's rightfully ours. Money is the last thing on my mind right now. Right now? All I can think about is that poor little girl in there. No one, no one could have taken better care of her than you have. Her father could have taken a lot better care. As long as Scott follows instructions, Serena goes right back to him. And he pays the ransom? That's part of it. What's the other part? Nothing for you to worry about. Rex. Yes? Could I see the picture? What picture? The one of Dominique that we used to get Serena. Oh, mm. Sure. She's so beautiful. I, I just wish I could have known her. Well, you might not have known her, but at least you'll have her. I'm sorry. I won't be so crude as to bring up money again. Oh! Don't you have a phone call to make? Come on, you took one look at that chess film and made a diagnosis that probably saved the child's life. You could have done the same thing. I mean, if they would have, like, what, if they would have let me? Thanks. I'm the one who should stop looking at Miss July's anatomy and start doing some work. Is this party for gentlemen only? Eh, feel free to take a look. Feel free to indulge your hobbies elsewhere. You got it. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Dr. Scanlon, you're still insisting on doing this? Showing up every day? Yes, I am. That was a very skillful diagnosis, Dr. Marchand. You probably saved that kid's life. I hope so. <laughs> Dr. Burgess. Look, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a residency in research. I mean, you probably already know that. It's what I'm suited for. It's just um, the timing I have. I set something up, I wait for the results. What are you getting at? That is the reason that I didn't jump in and do something when Cooper hit Audrey Hardy. It's not because I'm, I'm better or cooler or more ethical than Joe. And? He didn't think about himself. He didn't think about how much trouble he was going to get into. He thought about that woman because that's the kind of doctor that he is. Dr. Marshak, whether or not Dr. Scanlon acted properly is a question for the review board to decide. The decision's and, clear to me. And let me make something clear. Being a doctor involves a lot more than a knowledge of anatomy. Do you think I don't know that? You operate within a set of rules. Rules that were developed over time and for very good reason. It may not be a perfect system, but you play by the rules or you don't get to play. What would you have done that night? Dr. Marshak, may I give you a piece of advice? Please. I want you to spend your time learning medicine and leave the hypothetical questions to the philosophy department. I'll keep that in mind. You do that. Chinese food with a fork. 
Meet the last of the Red Hot Cretans. Did you make nice with Dr. Burgess? Oh, yeah, you know, we're buddies now. Tell me you didn't order any fried wontons. Damn it, Joe. Do you really get off on making trouble? What can I tell you? You got all the charm in the family. I had to settle for the brains. Mm, great. Use your brains to get us out of the jam we're in. What now? You rented the downstairs to Eve Lambert. Yeah, so? So I rented it to Julie Morris. When? Before you rented it to Eve. And when were you going to tell me about this? Look, Joe, Eve is waving around a notarized lease. Julie only has my word. Oh, man. Beautiful. I suggested the two share the place. And? And my celebrated charm about got me punched out. All right. What am I supposed to do? Go down there and fix things. How? I don't know. I, I just hate to see Julie lose out. She's so damn decent, she'll probably give in and let Eve keep the place for herself. What's so funny? Oh, uh, Julie. We'd sure hate to lose her as a tenant, wouldn't we, Frank? That's not the point. <laughs> oh, really? What is? <sighs> no. No, we wouldn't. What do you want me to do? I told you, fix things. Okay, what if there's nothing to fix? You weren't down there. Bad? Girls fight in a scary way, Joe. Let me tell you something about women, Frank. I can't wait. Women are a lot more practical than men and a lot more reasonable. Now, I'm sure they're going to work this thing out. They probably already have. Want some chicken with garlic sauce before you go? Oh, I'm not going anywhere and you're on call in about an hour and by the time you get back i should be nicely settled in i wouldn't get too settled if i were you you'll be going on duty when i get off and if you find your worldly possessions gone when you get back check the street if they haven't collected the trash i have a notarized lease are you always like this or is it a stress related syndrome i see through this iron butterfly act of yours so why don't we just get down to legalities i, I really feel sorry for you spare me you're so sure everyone's out to get you. Are you accusing me of paranoia? <laughs> you said it. Why don't we make a pact? Mm. You stop making little assessments on my character, and I'll help you move your things out to your car. How's it going down there? Great! I'm writing my check out now. So am I. <laughs> I told Frank things would work out. Perfectly. Mm-hmm. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> Julie? Yes, Eve. Uh, Frank mentioned you were a little low on cash. I can still afford a month's rent. Well, hey, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I've been there myself. No kidding. You know, we're on different schedules. And we probably won't even run into each other here. I'll be a sport and share the place with you. What's the catch? This is a one-time only offer. It'll never be repeated. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Here's my check, and here's my... Oh. What? I wrote it out for the wrong amount. Silly me. <laughs> That's all right. We can wait while you write another one. Well, actually, you know, that was my last check, but I'll call the bank tomorrow and I'll have them send me some more. There's no big rush. We trust you. Listen, I want to thank you guys for working this out. We really appreciate it. I'm sorry about the lack of communication. Listen, guys, I need to get some sleep. All right. And I have to be on duty soon. You have time for a cup of tea? I guess. Because my brother Frank here makes a mean cup of tea, don't you, Frankie? Don't you have things to do? Right. Uh, good night. What was that all about? Oh, you know, brothers and sisters, you can't live with them, and you can't live with them. Well, that's not true of you and Joe. Is that how it is for you? Oh, want to get that? Uh, I guess Joe did. Oh. I was just thinking of all those brothers and sisters of yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drives you nuts. I, I guess I'd rather come from a family like ours than one of those perfect suburban arrangements with 1.9 kids and everything handed to you and... At least I, I think that. Am I talking too much? No. Why would you say that? I, I don't know. <sighs> hey, before Eve barreled in, you said you had something to tell me. What was it? Uh, sorry to interrupt. That was Dr. Cornemain on the phone. My hearing's tomorrow. Oh, 
my gosh. Oh my. Donna Karen. Calvin Klein. Poor little rich girl. I'm sorry, this room is for house officers only. I was just leaving a note for Jake. Try not to make a habit of it. Sure. Is this pen yours? Yes, thank you. So you're the chief resident? Yes, that's right. It must be really great to be you. Excuse me? I mean, not only are you a doctor, but you are so beautiful. Yeah. I have it all. Scott, if I can be of any help, just let me know. Doc, listen, I know you're probably pretty angry at him just about now. I don't care what he says to me. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. At least there's something we know. I mean, it's better than just sitting around here doing nothing. Lucy, we're going to get Serena back. I promise you. She's going to be at the party when we tell the world that we're getting married. I love you. Keep an eye on Scott. He seems pretty close to the edge. I know. I can handle him. Don't worry. Okay, I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay, pal. Let's talk. About what? You intend to go after Serena yourself, don't you? Stay out of this, Lucy. Why don't we make a deal? You can be the idea man. You can make the plans, and I'll do the legwork, just like the old days, okay? How does Kevin fit in? I tell Kevin everything. I handle it myself, then. Forget it. I, I either lie to Kevin, or you just cut me out. Is that it? It's your call. Okay. Okay. What do you want me to do? Honey, I was hoping I'd see you, but you were out saving lives. I'm so proud of you, and I love you so much. Sometimes it scares me. That much love may not be good for either of us, but since there's no way I can imagine myself not loving you, I'll just have to say, love Danielle. Something bugging me about that ransom note. Something is wrong. Like what? Ah, uh, it's just too... It's too easy, you know, it's too slick. And what is this business about a week from now? I got it, I got it, I got it. Hello? Miss Coe? Yes? Who is it? This is Betty Schaefer at General Hospital. There's been a little problem with the test that you took the other day. A, a problem? Uh, there, there's, there's nothing wrong with the baby, is there? Not at all. It's just that one of the blood samples got lost. Well, you know, I gave you people probably a thousand of those blood samples. Well, um, hello, hello? <laughs> well, uh, there was a little mix-up, and, well, actually, it was my fault, and I could lose my job if my supervisor found out about it. I was wondering if you could stop by tomorrow and we could draw the blood again. I mean, no one would have to know if you just came by the lab. Uh, okay, right, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Right. Who was that? Some woman from the hospital, she said there was a, a mix-up in my uh, blood test. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, what, what's going on? What are you thinking about? You know how you said there was something bugging you about that ransom note? Yes, and there is. There's something bugging me about that phone call. Like what? Like, I just don't think that was from a real lab technician. Like. 
I have this funny feeling that, that maybe it's from a person that is involved with Serena. 